Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and it's time for your weekly wrap up and I'm in the new space and everything is coming along very nicely. I'm really excited about how it's all looking and we've got a nice big photo of the space shuttle back there now, which is uh, filling up that empty space that was driving me crazy last week. So we're slowly getting there. Uh, my next objective is to try to tamp down some of the echo you might hear if you're listening to me on headphones. I did put in some uh, foam above my head, which has helped a little bit, but I'm still getting a lot of echo into the room here because right now I don't have anything else set up beyond what you see right here in a little uh, desk off to the corner there. So I'm kind of shouting into an abyss right now. So uh, as I add more furniture, I'll be getting the home theater uh, space set up very shortly and uh, start to build out the space a little bit more. I think we'll be tamping down that echo a little bit. So if you're hearing it, don't worry, it's going to go away soon. And if you're on uh, speakers, you likely won't be hearing it at all. But we're getting there and I'm really excited to see how this is all turning out. And back, back to the space shuttle for a second. So that photo uh, my friends took with me when we were out at the, one of the last three space shuttle launches. So I took a few uh, really cool shots myself. And in fact, we got to uh, go inside two of the space shuttles as they were being decommissioned. So if you were interested in seeing uh, what that's all about, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe I'll do like a live stream or a little uh, hour long, just kind of a uh, rambling uh, tour of what I saw over the last couple of space shuttle launches. Because I took a lot of photos, a lot of video. And again, we got some tours inside of the shuttles themselves as well, which was just for me as a, a kid of the 80s who just watched these things launching on TV all the time. It was so cool to, uh, first of all, not only see them launch in person three times, but also to uh, get get a look inside as well. So really cool stuff. And if you're interested, uh, do let me know down in the comments below. I am uh, doing pretty well. Also two weeks into the uh, newborn's arrival here. This is our second child. So I'm a little tired. I got to get a haircut. I'm a little, uh, little worn out because she wakes up every two or three hours, but uh, she's healthy and happy and everybody's doing great. And in a few more weeks, I should be uh, getting caught up in my sleep again and my uh, mental acuity will return. So if you see me messing up at all, it's because I am not sleeping all that much, or at least not sleeping in long stretches of time just yet, but we'll be getting uh, back on the sleep schedule very shortly. I do want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, XEDMG Deb, who gave actually via our YouTube fan funding links. I want to thank them, him or her, uh, for their support. And also want to thank everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis, as well as everyone who is watching on a regular basis too, because all of those things combined help grow the channel. And uh, we were able to build out this really nice space because of all the support uh, from viewers we've had. So this has been uh, really exciting and gratifying to be able to build a workspace uh, really that came out of the revenue generated from people watching the channel. So the Patreon revenue has been set aside for a uh, new person we'll be getting in soon, but uh, the ad revenue actually came uh, very handy because it actually helped build out the space that I'm in right now, which was just totally awesome. So I've been having a great time just getting everything set up down here. It's always fun to set up a new workspace and I'm trying to keep it organized too. So hopefully that will uh, be the mission moving forward here. So we looked at a couple of things this week. I actually had some really good viewership on what I did. So I, I didn't upload as much just because these videos are really doing well. Uh, we had a Chewy HiBook 10.1, and this is a low-cost Windows tablet that also dual boots into Android. Uh, not a bad little device. It works pretty well. It's got a Cherry Trail processor on board as well, so a really fun little device. And I'm going to do a follow-up on this this week because I noticed some blemishes that were on my screen, and as it turns out, it was the screen protector. It was on there so well. It was so transparent that I couldn't see that it was on at all, so we'll be uh, peeling that off and also doing some uh, other questions that viewers had that I missed during the original review, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we also got a look at a really cool Chromebook. This is the Acer Chromebook 14. Uh, nice Chromebook, all aluminum, and it's got a beautiful 14-inch IPS display, and it's only about $300, as you see it there, too, with four gigs of RAM, so a really nicely uh, decked out Chromebook. We'll probably be seeing more of this as uh, we get into some of the new stuff that I'm going to talk about in a second that's coming to Chrome OS, so we'll be probably seeing that one on the desk a few more times in the very near future. And we also looked at the Dell Inspiron i3252, which is a uh, essentially a mini PC. It's a little bit larger case than you might see on some of those cheap PCs. It's actually powered by the same processor we've seen on many of those cheap PCs, but uh, this one's got an optical drive, a DVD burner, and a terabyte of storage along with four gigs of RAM, and you can upgrade the storage and the RAM, which is always nice to see in a mini PC. This one costs a little bit more at 350 bucks, but uh, you do get a little bit more for the price, and there's an i3 version also that I recommended in the review that might be more attractive to some folks, especially those looking to set up Plex servers, but a pretty cool little computer, and you can check that out again in the master playlist linked above. And now let's take a look at the news, and this is some 
exciting stuff for the Chrome OS crowd out there. So Google I.O. 2016, they announced that uh, the Google Play Store will be coming to Chrome OS and specifically to Chromebooks, which are uh, great little computers, but they're kind of limited in what they can do right now because they primarily run the Chrome browser and nothing else. But uh, after this effort begins, they will be able to run uh, any Android app that you can get from the Android Google Play Store. And this is very exciting, especially if you have a Chromebook and a uh, Android phone and have a ton of apps that you want to run on both. And that will soon be uh, the case. However, it's not going to be every Chromebook. So they have a list that's available uh, on that link that's below the logo there. You can check that out to see what's going to be uh, compatible. And they'll be adding Chromebooks to it over time. But that list is, at the moment, what they plan on supporting initially. Uh, there are three Chromebooks, the Asus uh, Flip, uh, the Acer R11, and of course the Google Chromebook Pixel, uh, which will all support this uh, coming up next month in June, and then others will be added on as time goes on. So those first three Chromebooks that will be supported first all have touch screens, but uh, this is not going to be limited to touch screen Chromebooks moving forward. So as uh, this starts rolling out, and there's, there's some things I can show you, I will uh, grab a Chromebook out of storage back there, we'll boot it up and see how it works. I do think Remix OS will survive this. A lot of you have been asking about Remix, which is a great uh, desktopified Android operating system that we've looked at a few times on the channel. And the reason why Remix is going to survive is that it runs on anything you can get it running on, including many PCs. Uh, this effort by Google is going to be limited to specific devices that they officially support. So this is not going to be a universal uh, Chrome thing. We'll have to see maybe if it works its way into Chromium OS. And if it does, maybe there will be a little bit uh, more flexibility there. But uh, in the short term, I think both will coexist for a while. And it's great to see some more functionality coming to the Chrome operating system. I am wondering what it's going to mean for Chrome OS's security because you're now going to have an app store which will have a lot more stuff uh, that will be, allow will be allowed to be loaded onto your machine. And generally, they're pretty good at keeping malware out of the Google Play Store. But occasionally, things find their way in. Happens on the Apple platform from time to time as well. So we'll have to see what that means for security overall. But uh, good to see more functionality coming to Chromebooks because that's the one complaint uh, that I get from a lot of consumers is that they don't do as much as the consumers want them to do, but now they uh, might be able to. So that's pretty cool stuff. So stay tuned. We'll see what comes up next. And now it's time for some Q&A. And this is another one of these representative samples that I get. So as you know, whenever I'm doing a low-end PC or Chromebook review, I'm always complaining about the fact that uh, Google Chrome is not playing back some of the higher bitrate video files efficiently on low-end PCs and Chromebooks. And that's because Chrome is not taking advantage of the hardware acceleration that's available on low-end Intel chips. Now, on the Windows side, uh, Microsoft's Edge browser does, and it actually works really well. Uh, but for some reason, Chrome just hasn't been optimized yet. And uh, Eric here is suggesting a uh, plugin called the h 264 fi which will uh, make it run a little bit better. But I think this is kind of out of reach of most consumers. And my uh, point in bringing this up is that I think Google needs to act and fix the problem as opposed to relying on extensions and making things more complicated for consumers. And I, I really think people have a hard enough time out there understanding the difference between a Chromebook and a regular Windows PC. But to add in layers of having to install extensions and everything just to get things to work in the browser, I think it's a bit much for consumers. And it's great for us techies to do that because we can easily solve it and understand the video codecs and compression. But uh, my mom doesn't. And that's who uh, is the Chromebook user in my life. And I have to tell her that, uh, yeah, you can't watch the 60 frames per second video on your Chromebook. But you know what? Come to think about it, she doesn't anyhow. But you know what I mean. I mean, there's people that are going to be wanting to watch gaming videos and other things that uh, can't do it uh, because that Chromebook is just not playing things back, even though its hardware is capable of doing so. So we'll see what happens. I'm sure they'll adjust it eventually, but I'm going to keep bringing it up until they fix it. Uh, but what little voice I have, maybe they'll hear it one day and we'll see what uh, happens there. And Ian wrote in with a very good question about buying refurbished and open box versus sealed box when it comes to electronics. And he's read some very good and some very bad stories. And I can tell you, I've had very good and very bad uh, stories to tell with this as well. And you know, my rule of thumb is you have to trust the, the company or person you're buying it from when it comes to refurbished electronics. Because some get refurbished by the manufacturer and they come with a warranty. And a lot of times they're as good as new. Uh, I've done a lot of refurbished purchases from Apple. And uh, they've always actually been a very good experience for me. In fact, I, you know, I buy a lot of uh, gear for work and whatnot. And I've had better luck, believe it or not, buying refurbished gear from Apple than I've had buying new gear. I've had more things new from Apple come broken uh, versus the refurbished stuff, which usually comes uh, in pretty good shape. And actually, in many cases, good as new uh, with a full warranty. And that's Apple, though. So these things are going back to Apple. They're refurbishing them, uh, getting them good as new. And in fact, they're often being worked on by Apple engineers here in my home country in the United States. Uh, so there's a little bit more attention being given to that machine because it has to be maybe brought 
brought back from a state in which it wasn't working to the point that it is. And I've really had very good luck with the refurbs over time. Uh, but you could buy maybe something off, the, uh, you know, off of Amazon that's an open box, and that may or may not have the same uh, level of quality assigned to it. So you really have to be careful, and I think really it's a matter of trusting who's selling it. So I think you'll be fine getting a refurbished device from, you know, from Apple or from HP or Dell on their refurbished storage. You'll save a little bit of money and get uh, pretty much a good as new warranty on it as well, which is always a good thing, but you'll have a little bit less luck when it's some other company, some third party who's buying up a lot of junk computers off lease or something and getting them uh, refurbished themselves. It may not have the same experience. So uh, be very careful. I think it's really about trust and uh, who can deliver you uh, something that will work and work as they say it will. And Jeff Steinhauer had a great question here that came in this morning about uh, ransomware and what that means for network attached storage devices. And uh, really anything on your network is uh, susceptible to getting uh, encrypted by one of these things. You really want to be careful about how you set things up because this is something that can happen. In fact, it almost happened at my day job. Uh, some malware came in through an ad that was showing up through Yahoo's ad network and uh, it infected this guy's computer in one of our remote uh, portions of the building. And before you know it, it was actually going out and just encrypting everything it had a drive letter for. So the way these things typically work is that it goes through your C drive and encrypts everything from there. It usually goes in alphabetical order, although I'm sure some of these malware applications work differently than the one I experienced. And then it goes out and looks for other drive letters. So if it sees a USB drive plugged in at drive D, it'll go on there and start uh, encrypting everything on that. And then it will then uh, look for other drive letters. So if you have a network attached storage de device, you know, mapped to drive E on your computer, it's just going to treat that like a normal hard drive and just start encrypting everything on there too. So I think it's a matter of uh, coming back to trust again, trusting the users that you have to uh, not do things that might attract malware. Uh, that's the first thing. But uh, more than anything, keeping good backups will really get you out of trouble every time. So having an external backup, swapping out those backups on a regular basis is important. Uh, not mapping drive letters if you can avoid it. Although I'm sure over time, these uh, ransomware applications are going to get smarter and smarter and start looking for public shares that they can get access to. So I would say as a matter of practice, good backup, no drive letters, unmounting uh, your network attached storage devices when they're not in use and uh, those things might protect you a little bit but again I think just having that backup and making sure you've got a drive that is disconnected with that backup data on it on some regular basis you know swapping out drives uh, just so you have an air gap there so uh, if the worst happens at least you can go back to something versus having to pay out money to uh, international crime syndicates this ransomware thing is really scary and unfortunately for a lot of folks if they don't have a backup uh, often the only way to get your data back is to send those bitcoins into the perpetrators and uh, that is it. They're often out of the reach of uh, law enforcement in most countries. A really scary thing. And again, that's something that uh, you can avoid by giving your relatives who are susceptible to clicking on things a Chromebook, uh, which doesn't get those typical ransomware uh, malware packages installed on them. So that's you know, one of those areas where having a Chromebook or something running Linux might uh, save you a little bit of hassle and aggravation. So if you don't know, the, if, you, if the person is really good at computers, get them something other than Windows sometimes, because I think that might protect them a little bit better. So what do we got this week? We got something fun coming up here. Uh, I did install the HD Home Run recording engine, their new DVR, uh, onto my NVIDIA Shield Pro. So we're going to take a look at that running on there. So I've got an NVIDIA Shield Pro right now, right over there, uh, running with the record engine as well as the client. So it is a standalone DVR, and it's working pretty nicely too. It's still all in beta, so we're going to talk about uh, some of the progress they've made on their uh, application. But we've got that working. We're also going to take a Raspberry Pi and use that as a client. So this NVIDIA Shield can record, can be uh, playback device and a server for other devices in the house. And we're using a Raspberry Pi running Kodi that can then uh, get those recordings off of the NVIDIA Shield as well as schedule new ones too. So it's really coming along. It's becoming a really nice product and you'll uh, get a feel for how it's working uh, coming up later this week. And this is probably something I'm going to get to in about two weeks and I've got it right over here. So AMD, as you might all remember, I, I found them over at uh, PAX East when I was there in Boston a week or a couple weeks ago now. And I was talking about how I felt bad that I really hadn't done a lot of AMD coverage on the channel. We've typically looked at only Intel stuff. So they uh, sent over some things. And we're going to build a PC that's going to cost around 300 bucks, but can still play games uh, somewhat decently. So what they did is they sent over a uh, AMD. This is a uh, A10-7800 uh, chip. This is one of their APUs. Uh, so we got the chip here. They sent along a fan and heat sink. We got an ASRock motherboard here. And I'm going to get a few other components, some memory and a case and a solid state drive. Not a big one, but a solid state drive nonetheless. And we're going to put a gaming computer together. It's going to cost about 300 bucks, which is a pretty good price for something that uh, is functional. And we'll stack that up against uh, what we've seen on the Intel side. Uh, and see how it does. And I get the sense from talking to a lot of you that the AMD APUs are a little bit faster than uh, the equivalently priced 
Intel stuff. So we'll put that to the test and see how it holds up. I think it'll probably do pretty well. So we'll see what happens. I've been hearing some really good things about these chips and I'm really eager to uh, finally do the low cost PC build. And my initial thought was when I was thinking about doing this, we maybe hit the $500 price point, but uh, we're going to do it for about 300 bucks, which should be pretty exciting. So stay tuned. We've got uh, more to come on that. I'll let you know uh, when that comes up. And that leads me to my last question, which is for you. Uh, and that is what kind of games should we look at playing on this? I'm sure I'll do Counter-Strike and all the usual stuff, but there's other uh, games you think might be uh, good to try. Do let me know down in the comments below because if you are thinking, you know, if you're on a budget and you want something that can run your favorite game, uh, let me know what it is and I'll see if I can get uh, an example running when we start putting that PC together. This might be one of my longer videos where we just kind of uh, go in and just let it run here and see what we uh, can get working on this PC. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can contribute to our Patreon page at lon.tv slash Patreon to make a monthly contribution to the channel. Uh, we also have YouTube fan funding at lon.tv, so you can contribute on a one-time basis over there. And of course, we have our Amazon page at lon.tv slash Amazon, and anything you buy uh, on Amazon, the U.S. store only at the moment, a small portion of the sale will go towards the channel, although you will not uh, see any increase in price as a result. So same price, but you can uh, help out the channel a little bit while you do your shopping. So those are some ways you can help the channel there. Uh, you can connect to the channel on our email list, which I promise to get going this week. This is the week I'm going to get it working, uh, lon.tv slash email. We've got our Facebook page at lon.tv slash Facebook, where I'll start be, I'll probably be doing a little bit more live streaming on Facebook too, so uh, definitely like me over there. We're building up that community a little bit. We also have the Reddit community at lon.tv slash Reddit and my store, and I've got a bunch of stuff in there, a lot of cheap computers in there, lon.tv slash store. Uh, so the items that I buy and then resell, uh, I put up on that store to get a little bit money back into the coffers here. So I lose money on those transactions, but my loss is your gain because you can buy uh, some nice little PCs for uh, less than the market price. Only one, uh, you know, one each because these are the ones that I reviewed here on the channel. If you want me to uh, autograph, somebody actually wanted me to do this. It was pretty cool. I autographed it too. So if you want me to sign your PC, uh, happy to do that, but not necessary. I can just send it in the box for you too, whatever you want. So that will do it for this week's weekly wrap up. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below. I want to thank everybody for your continued viewership and for bearing with me as I get through the sleep deprivation of a newborn, uh, but I'm almost out of the woods. I think another month, maybe I'll be uh, getting a full night's sleep again hopefully. Uh, but uh, all is going well and I do appreciate everybody who writes and watches and uh, keeps in touch with me as we are continuing to grow this little effort here. Hope to get the new person on board very shortly, which is where uh, we're using some of those Patreon funds for. Uh, believe it or not, I'm having trouble getting all my insurance work down. I'm trying to get some good coverages because they're going to be working out of my home. So uh, it's never easy to hire people. In fact, it's probably going to cost more uh, in insurance to hire this person than it might actually pay them out. Uh, just the nature of the beast of employment these days, but you got to play it safe. So uh, getting all my ducks in a row and hopefully very soon we'll have some extra help here on the channel, which will mean more videos per week, I hope. So that'll do it for this week. Do keep those questions and comments coming. And this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.